that which is in constant motion and is therefore not fixed to any one place, that jiva does not experience anything. Hence it is both the non-experiencer and also non-inert. So what's this about? That which is in constant motion and is therefore not fixed to any one place. This can only be the attention. It's the attention which is in constant motion. It can't be fixed to any one place. Does the attention experience anything? It's, so it's both the non-experiencer and it's also non-inert. It's not the experiencer and it's not the object of experience. This is the attention. It's consciousness. When one's consciousness does not get fixed onto something or depend upon something, he is non-experiencer and non-inert, though he does a hundred things. So when the attention is not getting hijacked, when it realizes its nature is consciousness, and when it appreciates the significance of that, the significance of the consciousness, the attention is the everyday miracle. When you contemplate the nature of the attention, you're contemplating the infinite. You're contemplating the supreme. And when the attention is not identifying with anything, when the attention is free, when it's not getting hijacked in accordance with fetishes or addictions, then we can live effectively and efficiently and happily. The pure consciousness in the heart is untainted by the object of experience. Hence he who is inwardly free from contact is liberated. When one who has removed mental conditioning does not entertain thoughts of objects, but remains firmly in pure consciousness, although externally active like a dumb child, then he is rid of dullness and objective experience. He is unpolluted, though he is engaged in actions. He is bliss. By this means one should endeavour with all one's being to cross the ocean of samsara. He is bliss in the sense of not being caught up in the storms of negativity. He is bliss in the sense that he's untouched by all that. This is equanimity. It's the bliss of equanimity. The reality is the seed for consciousness. Normally we say consciousness is the seed for reality, but we don't need to get hung up on notions of consciousness. Reality is the seed for consciousness. For consciousness arises in pure existence, like rays from a lamp. And again, this consciousness is the attention. This pure existence has two forms, as it were. And forms here is between apostrophes. One is diversity and the other is unity. Again, it's like the magnet that I spoke of last time. The magnet, which is one, but which has a north pole and a south pole, which sets up a field. And if we imagine that that magnet is not necessarily solid, it's actually lots of magnets which can start interacting with each other repelling and attracting each other. That's the so-called diversity. It's unity, but appears as diversity. The diverse objects which are seen here are all diverse appearances of the one indivisible unity. But when this diversity is abandoned by the consciousness, it rests in unity. Therefore, abandon all these apparent divisions of pure existence into time, different aspects and diverse substances and be devoted to the one pure existence. Come back to the reality of the one experiencing. Turn the attention on itself. There's the one magnet 
We don't need to bother about its poles or about how it can be subdivided. Enlightenment practice is about realizing the undivided nature of everything, of realizing it's actually only the attention. The attention is one thing, but it gets drawn to many things because we have the conviction that what it's drawn to is different from its own nature. So be devoted to the one pure existence. Though the time factor and one's own existence may be freedom oriented and therefore appear to be desirable categories, yet they are not real. We seem to be free individuals, don't we? This whole notion of us as individuals existing in time and space, these are categories. And all categories have no intrinsic reality. All such divisions create conflict and confusion in one's vision. How can they be regarded as good and desirable? Hence contemplate the one pure existence alone. Your entire being will be filled with bliss. It is only a small particle of that pure existence that has apparently become the seed for this world appearance. Everything has evolved from that. In other words, it's thinking that the bar magnet, which has the north and south pole, is actually more than one thing, or made up of two things. It's that very notion which is the seat of this diverse world appearance. Everything has evolved from that. However, if the notion of this world appearance is abandoned, that seat is destroyed. This isn't an intellectual understanding. We have to come to rest in the nature of our own attention, of our own awareness. Go beyond any notions, any emotional tone that which that might engender, experiences freedom. Experience the release from all anxiety. From all psychological suffering.